friends, Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. And before we start on the actual craft time chat part, I wanted to show you a quick update. Uh, I have another batch of hard white wheat berries soaking and they're about done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drain them out here pretty quick because I started them yesterday afternoon. And in this batch, I actually remembered to add vinegar. You put a little bit of vinegar or some type of acid in there and that helps them to sprout. And so what I have here is my homemade peach apple vinegar. And um, anyway, that's what's going on. And I recommend until I get more experienced at this and I can do a video just on the soaking and all that, um, please go check out Stacy's video on soaking nuts, grains, beans. I don't remember the exact name, it's something like that. I'll try to remember to link it in the description box below. Um, so go to Doug and Stacy Off Grid on YouTube and then find that video. Okay, so on to the craft time chat. My subject today is what is a homesteader? And because everybody has different, different definitions. And so I've had a pretty good thought in my head what that is. And I figured that because I'm only on a third of an acre and I do not have livestock and I don't even have my chickens yet, I'll probably be get, getting questions or even accusations that you're not a homesteader, you're just a you're just a poser or whatever, because I've seen that happen to other people that have more land and, and act than I do and livestock. So I'm gonna read to you what I found on the internet that actually fit precisely into what I always thought a homesteader was. And, and granted, this is gonna be your more modern interpretation. I mean, we know about the homesteaders that came in, they were the settlers, and so a lot of people get that vision in their mind. But let me read this, it's as simple as this. Homesteading is a lifestyle of self-sufficiency. It is characterized by subsistence agriculture, home preservation of foodstuffs, and it may or may not also involve the small-scale production of textiles, clothing, and craft work for household use or sale. This doesn't say anything about owning livestock. So that can, that may or may not fit into your homesteading lifestyle. So I guess my, my take on it is it shouldn't be about what somebody else tells you what a homesteader should be. I think it's all, and this is again, what I've always felt, I think it's all very individual. We're all gonna, we're gonna have a lot of areas where we're very similar. And I think that number one thing is, is the um, goal to becoming more self-sufficient. Um, and I always say more self-sufficient because I don't believe that we can personally, and sometimes I wish it, I wish I could believe it, but I do not believe that any one person or even any one family could be entirely self-sufficient. We still need community because everybody's going to have different skills, different talents, and different resources. Now there was another part of that definition I read somewhere else on homesteading that spoke of living, you know, rurally and in isolation. Well, Yes, I see that, and honestly, we are still shopping for property. And in case you don't know, and you didn't, you haven't read my about me, we're only on a third of an acre, corner lot in a neighborhood in city limits. Um, we live in a very small town, and in a very uh, remote town, um, but we're still in city limits. We're looking at property. There's a couple of different 20 acre pieces that we're looking at, but here, here's the thing. As much as we still want to get acreage and we still want to be a little more isolated from, you know, the, the standard American culture, you know, property, I, I, I obviously I, I agree with buying it, but I don't agree with going into debt. And right now, the pro any of the property we're looking at is more than the cash we have saved up, and which would mean we'd have to take a loan, which means we'd have to end up in debt. 
and we've been completely debt free for two and a half years now and I don't want to be under that bondage again and I know some of you are still in the process of paying off debt and that's great you know that that's you know we were all raised to believe we got to buy it now pay later I mean a lot of people that are my age especially my age and younger I'm 50 years old and um, probably even people 10 years older than me were raised that way. And uh, we all got caught up in that because that's what, that's what we were raised to believe. That's, that's what you do. You have to go into debt to get a car. You have to go into debt to get a house. Looking at self-sufficiency, then our goal is to be debt-free. You may not be there yet, but kudos to you if that is what you're working towards because of what three years ago we were still in the process of working towards it but here was the cool thing is once we got and no we didn't follow any one person's we hadn't even listened to anything by the guy that everybody loves the ramsey guy um i had heard about him but we already had a pretty good idea on what to do and had been practicing saving and paying off debt so when it came down to paying off the house it was just a matter of of we knew what had to happen is we had to change our priorities we had to set aside um we were never once to go to disneyland or go to we never did any of that i'm sorry if this offends some of you but nonsense um but we did do camping trips and go here and there and we did try to take our kids to more simple fun places and that's good I, I there's there's nothing wrong with that but since our kids were grown and there was no need for that anymore and then it was a matter of saying and we oh, we were also ones to never not go out to eat very much but when we decided, okay, we've got to pay off the house and we've got to pay it off now, ASAP, all of those things, uh, they got put on the back burner. We almost never went out to eat. We didn't even leave our small little town to do any shopping in the big, air, big town. And we found we saved a lot of money. And every bit of money that we saved by not doing any extras we went on to the house and the more that we saw our principal drop the more we would find ways to cut back so we could put more on principal it's that was my idea of the snowball effect because it wasn't just that you know the principal's getting knocked down and all that it's that your mindset suddenly changes and it's like the more you get closer to reaching that goal, the, the more you'd want to put more money on there and the more you'd want to find ways to save more money. Okay, let's, let's not do this for the time being. Let's give up that. And I know some of my family didn't understand it. They didn't understand why we gave up driving long distances to go to family reunions that we've been to many for many years straight, but it, it had to be something that we did. And, and I, I do not regret it one bit. It was one of the best decisions we made. So here we are, and I know I'm rambling, but here we are now working on saving up money to buy property. If that's what God wants us to do, we may stay put. We're gonna eventually get our chickens. We're working on that chicken coop. We're not bringing chickens home until we know that we've got a good sturdy coop and it's going to be, well, I, I don't think anything's ever entirely uh, predator proof, but we're gonna do our best to make sure it's predator proof. And we're, my husband's not, he's not going about this job lightly and that's why we're taking our time on this. And if you go back, by the way, if you go back and look for the chicken coop videos, there's a couple of them. He hasn't had time 
to work on it anymore since the last video because there's been too many other projects that really, really needed to get done. And since we're not in a hurry for chickens yet, that's something that can wait till next year to finish. Um, and besides, I have friends that I barter for eggs for. So with sewing projects and homemade beauty products and whatnot. So anyway, I didn't really mean to get onto the debt thing, but you know what? It really does spin into being self-sufficient. So you may not be there yet yourself, but you also may be one that has more property than we have and has the livestock. We're all in different stages of homesteading. You may live in an apartment, but you're doing everything you can to get or stay out of debt, to cook from scratch, to try container gardening, um, to finding ways to be able to cook without using public power. To me, that can be a definition of, of homesteading. Um, if, if, the, if the main and the first, the first definition of being a homesteader is a more self-sustainable lifestyle, then what, what does it matter how big your property is or your house is or how entirely off grid you are, as long as you're on that road. And that's where we're at. Um, I, I don't know a percentage of how off grid we are, but I would say for the most part, most of the time, we are mostly off grid but we still have public power and public water and we use them. Those, a lot of times, are, are really our backup sources. Right now I'm using the electric lights in here, not because I need them for what I'm doing, because the daylight's plenty enough coming in the, the glass door there. I'm using it for the sake of the video because, you know, I notice the picture just turns out way too dark if I don't have extra light. But as far as just living and doing what I'm doing, I'm running a treadle machine. I don't need electricity for this. And by the way, um, I'll try to remember to link this again below. This, this is not a converted machine. This is not an electric machine that has been converted to a treadle. I've had a couple people ask me that question. This was bought, purchased, brand new treadle machine. So you just have to get your table but I found this on Amazon and it will come with a belt. And eventually, I, I should have thought to videotape this, but to film this, but I did actually just replace this belt and I've had this machine for over three years. And uh, I just replaced it the other day and silly me, I should have thought to film the process. It's, it's pretty simple, but um, I'll try to get to that someday. Because, uh, well, in fact, usually when you first put your belt on, it'll be tight because it's leather. It will start to stretch after time. So eventually I'm going to have to take this off because I had to do this with the first one. Um, eventually I'll have to take this off and tighten it up, you know, cut some more off. And so when I do that, I'll try to remember to film it so those of you who are wanting to see how that's done can see how it's done. Okay, so anyway... Um, I don't know if I said everything I wanted to say about the whole... I'm sorry. Doggies, can you go play somewhere else? You really are being good. Right. Normally I'd like it, I like it when they play in here better than in the living room because they're always knocking stuff over. They get, it's like having little children again. But they're making too much noise. So I stick them in the other room to play. Um, anyway. Whatever I was saying, talking about the whole homesteading thing. I don't know that I covered all the things I wanted to say about that, but I would like to hear your thoughts or read your thoughts. So in comments below, tell me what, you, what your um, definition of a homesteader is. And not just for my sake, but for others that come in here that are, because I, I, I know some of those people out there that are, have felt pretty frustrated over a tax they've gotten for, for not having more than two acres or not having livestock, yet they're doing all these other things to be more self-sufficient. I would count them. And they're on, a, one family in particular I'm thinking of is on a quarter acre lot. So even smaller than what I have, but they're making the most of what they have. And to me, 
Yeah, that's a homesteader. So, and then another question I have that I would really like some feedback on is, is for these chat times, do you want me to focus on just one topic or several? Do you want me to keep it shorter, like five to 10 minutes, or do you like 10 to 20 minutes? Because I can easily do that in case you haven't noticed, because I, once I get talking about something I'm passionate about, I can run with it and it's really hard for me to stop. And I usually end up having to edit out a lot of stuff out of my videos to keep them a little shorter, because I don't realize how long I've been talking. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and yeah, let me give me some feedback on these things and take care and God bless. Oh, and thanks for watching.